Hi all, I have another great game to show you over the chess against Stockfish 8. This is provided by David Grosvenor in one of his amazing tournaments. Time control 40 moves per two minutes with a two second increment per move. So pretty quick intuition test. E4 from Leela. So this is ID 21817. So C5, we have Knight F3, A6, Knight C3, B5. D4, E6, and now Leela takes some space in the center with D5. We have D6, D takes, F takes, and now E5. Now Stockfish keeps things closed with D5, clearly taking looks to be a bad idea intuitively because of taking the queen, disrupting the king. Knight takes E5, it looks very nice for white. So keeping things Closed seems pretty prudent. And where is this bishop going? Actually, it finchettos now g3, knight c6, and not an ordinary, in fact, not a finchetto. We have bishop h3, perhaps more accurate to target e6. So preventing the bishop going to b7 at least as well. We have knight h6, very dynamic move from Stockfish. So with the idea potentially of knight f7. Or knight f5, but knight f7 puts pressure on e5, so this is quite dangerous. Should white give up this bishop? Well, Leela actually did, so we have bishop takes h6, g takes. Now knight e2 is played, bishop g7, that's a perk of having that g7 square to put pressure on e5. It's ignored that pressure, knight f4, because tactically this cannot be taken in this position. So knight f4 pulls the pressure on e6. If black dares take on e5 here, then knight takes, bishop takes, and queen h5 check picks up that with an extra piece. Thanks very much. So knight f4, we have queen e7 protecting e6. Queen e2 now putting more pressure on e5, over protecting that e5 point. c3, we have bishop d7, white castles. a5. Yeah, this looks like a, a dangerous expansion on the queen side. And that that, that looks extremely uh, <laughs> bad to, to take there. Knight d4, for example, hitting the queen, hitting f3. Looks to be near disaster. And there's also some other ideas of bishop b5. If the queen dropped back, there's things like bishop b5 as well. So all in all, this pawn looks to be immune. So Leela continues overprotecting this central e5 point. It's a kind of Nimzovician overprotection of e5, that central point. This is actually Nimzovich is absolutely favourite square to overprotect with white when black castles kingside, creating a cramp on black's position and limiting counterplay. We have rook a b8, b3, queen e8. Now this does support the idea of playing h5. So interesting stuff is going on now. Uh, we have now rook a d1, king h8, and now queen e3 is played. And here, this looks as though black should consider moving this pawn, but there's a very, very tactical, seemingly very cunning response from black here. So the pawn's targeted, and you might have expected c4 here. White's well, pretty comfortable in this position. For example, bishop g4 gets control of that h5 square again, so stopping any h5 from black, and maybe even supports knight h5 later. However, black gets in h5, sacrificing that pawn, because there's another perk to this. The bishop is activated or can be activated on this diagonal to put pressure on f4 and you can see that the pressure on the f file this knight on f3 looks loose is Leela getting into huge tactical trouble here if she takes this pawn in fact she did and now we see bishop h6 this starts to look pretty nasty a lot of players with white would perhaps have rejected this the queen seems to be neglecting the f3 Knight, a weakness of the last move. Black's got that f file pressure as well. Isn't this just too dangerous to allow this? Uh, so clearly, if the knight moves anywhere, 
and just snapping off there. There's no there's no compensation. The knight cannot step back to d3 for the same reason. So what does white do? Guess what Leela plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, white to play. Okay. Knight takes d5. Yeah, a peace sack offering actually two different pieces. Two different knights are offered. Now the knight on d5 is taken. Uh, let's have a look taking the other knights. In fact, knight f6 hits the queen and bishop. Now, uh, although uh, the queen's attacked, let's look at bishop f8 for a moment. There's actually rook d6 here and the queen still attacked. And this is actually quite nice disposition. White's getting back the material, winning the queen. If the queen moves uh, somewhere, white gets the material back. So all of this is favourable actually for white. So very interesting on rook takes f6. Let's look at this again. And you might wonder, well, what about taking the queen? Just bishop takes c5 is strong here, leaving that knight loose. Looking at f2 now. So for example, this this is just uh, very strong. Rook takes f6. Black ends up gaining material tactically, that being a piece up with a big advantage. So yeah, this knight takes e8 line is not working. If we just look at this again. Yeah, rook takes f6. Uh, if e takes f6, then again, this is just a piece up for black. Black is winning there. So in this very sharp line, it seems as though rook takes f3 with knight f6 is all favourable for white. So e takes d5 was played. And now e6 offering the other knight. But it's of course attacking d7 for the moment. So okay, not such a big deal. But after bishop c4, bishop c8 rather, should white be moving this knight in this position? So what to do here? What would you do here if you had the white pieces? Now this is just really incredibly cl calm clinical move in this position, which is you might think very surprising. So white's just sacrificed the piece. What could be of great interest in this position? And this is remarkable now. This is remarkably powerful in this position. A very advanced test for you. What would you play in this position if I give you white? Five seconds. Pause the video now if you want to analyze. Okay, this is a shockingly advanced tactic. C4. So offering the knight to get two connected pass pawns in the center. So rook takes f3, c takes d5. It looks like strong connected pass pawns. Now, Stockfish actually didn't take on f3 immediately, but played b takes first. b takes, and now taking on f3. So thanks very much. Two pieces. Yes, this will be interesting. And that's the game continuation. But before we have a look at that, let's have a look at what would happen if d takes c4 breaking up white's pawns. It turns out here that there's a funny configuration of black's pieces in this position, which makes knight e5 incredibly powerful. Yeah, this is just really powerful. For example, here, check and then taking on b8. Uh, so it's very difficult position here. And there's ideas of sometimes maybe even rook d7 in some variations. Very, very difficult position. This wasn't entered into, so black just snapped up the piece. So are the two connected pass pawns really worth it here for the two sacrificed pieces? Let's see, knight b4. And in fact, it looks as though black's even immediately got even more ideas of tactics coming in, incoming tactics based on f2, forking the, the queen on c5 with f2. White pushes ahead, Leela just pushes ahead, d6. We have knight d3, and this also covers the e5 square as well, that knight. And if, check anyway, there's bishop g7 on, uh, on d4 as an example. That might be bishop g7. But, okay, what does white actually do? Very powerful move here. 
Before we get into that, let's look at also bishop takes e6 as an alternative. d7 is strong. For example, here, check, we've got that e5 square. And this, we can play queen takes b8, crashing through that d-pawn. So that pawn in the center is worth its weight in gold. This is just a winning position for white. So knight d3, queen c7 hitting the rook on b8. Very, very sharp position. Okay. Now it turns out here, bishop takes e6 was played. If rook b7, then d7. If knight takes e1, you might be wondering, queen takes. And this is a very sharp scenario, which I believe Stockfish in a fraction of a second had to change its mind about something, which was namely this cute idea of rook e3 here protecting knight tactically and trying to get to white's king across all the diagonals. For example, f takes, check, and then check, and then white king is, is just terminated because the knight is actually useful <laughs> on e1 uh, there. So some very amusing variations on rook e3. But it seems e7 is strong. So check here, rook e2. This is very sharp stuff. But the, the pawns crash through, it seems, uh, basically leaving white with, this is just an example of big advantage. This is just crashing through with the pawns. So yeah, this tactical I, these tactical ideas are not working. So um, yeah, so that was on knight takes e1. So in the game we have bishop takes e6. Now rook takes e6, queen f8, and now d7. So just not really caring about f2. There's no time to do this, it seems. Bishop g7 to do something with f2. So bishop g7 was played. If knight takes f2 here, then bang d8 just queening no problems uh, so I mean the king's also got an escape by king g2 and king takes h3 if that that queen's pinned there's no mating that or anything so uh, okay so d7 we have bishop g7 let's just put that on the board d7 bishop g7 bang queen takes b8 is played here queen takes check now rook takes b8, rook takes rook takes d3. Now let's take stock here <laughs> against stockfish. Uh, so two pawns up, very dangerous looking d pawn. It stops a bit more, but rook d5 forks the two pawns here. Yeah, more material it seems to be gained. So rook takes past a pawn. Now it looks pretty hopeless. For stockfish, yeah, this looks absolutely hopeless. This position, so bishop g2 here, bishop b7 guiding that pawn through. That a pawn is too dangerous now, and the rook gets behind the pawn, it's just absolutely winning. So, yep, in fact, the game had ended in this position to be fair, rook d1 check. Uh, so this this was actually just a fictional. If it if it had continued, King G two, the the the, the a pawn just crashes through, queening. Okay, so this was a really impressive game. I thought for the point of view of the two connected pass pawns in the centre, and, and that's why David Grosvenor also really recommended this game for me to check out. Thank you, David. Brilliant game there again. And okay, if you enjoyed this game as much as me then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net and it has my reference code 1053 which enables me to invite you to some tournaments, free tournaments and invite you for games. You can also check out the YouTube analysis in advance of these games on the improved menu, Learn from the Masters. So check that out. Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, subscribes, appreciated. Thanks so much.